Hi everybody, welcome back. My name's Claire. Thanks so much for joining me. Um, I'm really excited. I'm going to do a longer canvas. I'm going, I've got a 20 by 50 um, centimetre um, gallery wrapped canvas, so a deep edge canvas. I've got some paint leftovers from the previous pour. I'm going to do five little straight pours in a row and then tilt them straight off. Um, so I'm going to have hopefully a canvas with five panels of paint. Um, so I'm really excited. I haven't been this excited for ages. I think it's the canvas, the fact that it's a box canvas. Um, yeah, I can't wait. Um, let me show you what I'm using. So here are all the colours. What I have done, let's move that one a second, is divided them into two groups. So this group here and this group here. So I've got some iridescent green, yellow, silver, purple, copper and then this amazing colour this was what I scraped off my worktop after the previous pour I'll link the previous pour in the description of the video so you can see what I did to make this colour it's sparkly can you see it's a bit iridescent it's just such a beautiful beautiful colour so I'm going to layer up three cups with these five colours and then I'm going to layer up two cups with these so I've got some pearl green some manganese blue from Amsterdam, some gold Montmartre, some iridescent pink from Pebio and the iridescent blue green from Pebio. So those five colours are going to make up two cups. I want an odd number of cu um, cups because I like odd numbers in artwork. I just think it looks better. I've got some white here. I'm going to use it sparingly um, because it creates so many cells. I, I, I don't want loads, so I'm going to use it sparingly. Um, so and I'll also in the description of the video I'll put the recipe every paint is mixed with PVA glue and water so I'll put the mixtures in the description so I'm going to layer up the three cups first um, this is the order I'd like them in but I haven't actually decided which way to go I think I'm going to start I'm going to go this way I'm going to start with the green Um, the consistency, it's quite thick, but it pours really nicely. It leaves a trail on the surface. It's nice and creamy. So I would quite like two layers of each colour. So I'm just going to pour it down the side just a little bit. Actually, that was probably too much to start. It doesn't matter. If you put too much in of the first colour, it doesn't matter. When you pour the cup out at the end, remember which colour was where you went put in first, and then you can just stop tipping the cup um, for quite as long at the end, so you don't get quite all, all the paint out. Now, in the last pour I did, I discovered that putting these two next to each other is amazing absolutely amazing combination purple and copper i've never used them together before i was amazed absolutely stunning combination now this pu this purple is the amsterdam permanent oh what's it called let me just find it permanent blue violet by amsterdam but it's very very dark so i just added a little bit of white so that when it does dry, it will go darker and look like that, but not, not so dark that it looks black. So I was just preparing my canvas, my um, 20 by 50 centimetre canvas, and looked at the amount of paint I've got there and just realised way too much paint for that size canvas. So I'm disappointed because I wanted to use this canvas, but I'd have to I'd have to maybe use just three cups and I've got five. I want to use all five. So changing the canvas. So I've now got a 40 by 50 centimetre canvas. 
Um, so I'm going to lay, I'm going to put the puddles down in the centre and then I'm going to tilt it off one way and tilt it off the other way. Um, should I, just wondering about putting some tape on the side. I think I might put some tape on the side so that the outside puddles don't spill over straight away. I think I might do that. So I'm just going to get some of my um, picture framing tape. This tape is what I use to tape the backs of my canvases. So if I break off a piece that's the correct width, and then I'm going to fold half of it down, or well, sorry, a third of it down to, um, to that point there. So I've now got a sticky bit at the bottom and then a non-sticky bit at the top. And then I can stick that onto my canvas edge. So I'm hoping that will just help the paint to stay on the canvas. Just the same the other side. Great, right, so let's, where do I start? Shall I start in the centre? I think I'm going to start in the centre. Um, I'm going to put just... Should I put a puddle down? No, I'm just going to pull straight on. Right, here you go. So the centre, let's go, let's just say it's about there. So these are paper cups. I like using paper cups because I can pinch them, make a little funnel. So straight pours. Right, that's a massive puddle. <laughs> Doesn't matter, but I'm going to stick to the five. I'm going to put the next ones probably about here and then that will push that puddle in a bit more, I think. Right, all puddles are down. So let's give it a torch. Going to keep the uh, tape on at the side to start with. And then I'm going to tilt it and then take the tape off afterwards. So I'm not going to do any side to side tilting. I'm just going to tilt. Actually, do you know what I should do? I'm going to put some flow extender down. I've still got paint left over. So I've got lots of this color. So I'm just going to put some flow extender down.
Now, how am I going to get these corners? I think I'm going to have to tilt it. I've got a big lump of something in there. What I might do, I've gone over the edge there. If I turn it round and just go over the edge here, I think what happens is because the, it's a canvas, it just sags towards the middle, which is why these set these central three puddles are squashed and the two outside ones mm. are just getting bigger and bigger. I'm going to tilt in the hope that I can just anchor that one over the corner there. Right, I'm just losing my straight lines, doesn't matter. This will be plan B, totally different design. Let's go over this corner. I might be able to straighten it up a little bit, but I think once you've started tilting in different directions and losing the lines, it's difficult to get them back. Right. I think that's why I wanted the really thin, narrow canvas, because it works so well for something like this because you can literally just tilt off one edge and then the other. Right, I'll tilt, I'll go to the corners, then I will take the tape off and then have a look at the composition. looking pretty cool not what i was wanting but it's looking pretty cool right i can take these edges off now and i'm hoping it's not doing it yet but i'm just hoping there's enough paint and that will just drip over the edges right let's have a think about this composition not what I wanted at all. What I could do is try and anchor this off the edge here and here, because that will then help to stretch this out. I think I might do that. Let me just pop some gloves on. So if I can get the weight of the paint back in the centre of the canvas here, yeah, and then tilt off either end that way, and then that will help the edges get, get covered because they're not, it's just not, there's not enough paint to drip down at the moment. So... the paint yeah I think it's quite near the center anyway so let's just go down this way and then I'm just going to go straight down over the other edge Get some of that green off the edge there in that corner. Right, that is working well. But I can see another lump of paint. You often just get lumps and it's just paint that just hasn't mixed properly. Right, that edge is really nicely covered. So let's go back to this end and tilt a little bit more, I think, off this end now. And then that will help the centre just to open up a little bit. I'm keen to try and keep that bright green because I love that bright green in the centre there.
Right, I think I might be there. It's really interesting. My edges are mostly covered. I'm just going to dab a little bit of paint and pull down what paint is on here in the, the, the edges where it's yeah, just a couple of tiny bits that have missed. Mostly just on the corners. I'm so happy. Um, I want to show you something really, really interesting. Do you remember the bright green is the centre of the cup, the centre of each puddle? So look at that. But then look at this. So what I have done is just so much paint has gone. I have managed to just stretch out the centre of those cups. Um, so, wow, just so interesting. Um, so this one's not as stretched, but you get this amazing section of cells. So that white is the white reaction I was talking about. The um, I think is it the De Rowney paint I use. Um, no, Royal and Langnickel paint, sorry. Um, the white just has this really cellular effect. So just a little bit of that goes a long way to create some really interesting designs. Um, I'm not as keen on this gold and turquoise panel um, in both, but it splits up the purple because the purple's taken over in the other sections, um, the purple and green. So it just breaks it up so nicely. Um, and I love the brightness of that green with the purple. My bronze has got a bit lost, which I'm slightly disappointed at because I wanted the bronze and the purple. It, you can see it there actually, but it's not it's not particularly obvious, the bronze. I quite fancy doing a purple, bronze and green painting. I think that would look really pretty. Such really beautiful colors together. And again, look, there's that. that's the white. So you can see in there, that line of little cells are created by that drizzle of white that I put in and the same there and actually here that's one of the lines and then this must be where the, the other line was um, so I'll be back when it's dry I'm doing another happy dance I'm so happy um, it's gone so well it's dried beautifully it's really smooth um, it's dried really well. I am loving these really rich, intense straight pores at the moment. I am over the moon with this. The colours are just so vibrant. Um, let's start down here. So there's that lovely green centre, bright, bright green next to the purple. And that's got to be one of my favourite colours uh, combinations. That with the purple and the bronze. So I'm definitely going to do a green, yellow, a purple and a bronze pour next. Um, they just look like clouds. Can you see? And it looks like the sunlight is shining on those clouds. That's just so interesting. Um, the the colours are just amazing. The effects, the details. So you can see again in that green section that that purple is just peeking through. Very intense line there. And then look at this tiny little line of cells through the centre. That's again, that's, that's the Royal and Langnickel white. And there, I just love the, the effect of this white because it just, it looks transparent almost. And then you can see some of that, that um, colour that I um, wiped off, off the worktop, that bluey greeny colour, that turquoisey colour. I'm just amazed by the intensity of these colours. Um, somebody left me a comment about the fact that um, they were confused because mixing PVA glue with your paints dulls the colours. It definitely does dull the colours slightly because you can see the difference now compared to it was when it was wet. It's slightly duller now, but not that dull. And actually, when you then varnish it, it just brings it alive again. It, it brightens it up again. So I'm quite a fan of using PVA glue. Not everybody is. But the main reason I really use it is because it's a much cheaper alternative for a pouring medium than Fluoritrol. So I'm, I'm sticking with it. Um, again, let me show you the, the shine and the, irides the iridescence of this. So that's the shine that the PVA glue is giving. And just look at how smooth that has dried. It's just dried beautifully. Great. So thank you so much for watching. Um, please do subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Um, and then if you click the, um, the, be the little notification bell and click it to all, you'll be notified as soon as I upload any new videos. Uh, if you like it, give it a thumbs up and please leave me any comments you want to.
Great, thanks so much for watching. Bye.